How can we aggregate data from multiple microservices? Are there technologies or patterns we can use? Let's discover it in the next few minutes. In a microservices architecture, each service manages its own subdomain in the context of a larger system. The data is stored in independent databases and can be accessed only through APIs or events exposed by those services. This approach allows us to parallelize the implementation of each service and also to operate services independently. However, it creates a serious challenge whenever we need to combine data from multiple subdomains. The need for data aggregation is very evident in the user interface. Whether we are trying to render a dashboard or just a product listing, the information might be stored in different microservices, which means multiple API requests are necessary to render the complete view. The main issue with concurrent API requests on the browser is performance, especially in poor connections like Wi-Fi and cellular networks. In this scenario, requests suffer from high latency and failure rates. This can have a drastic impact on the user experience and the way our product is perceived. To mitigate this issue, we can use the gateway aggregation pattern. The gateway is a service positioned at the edge of our system that aggregates multiple individual requests and exposes them as a single request. This way we reduce chattiness between clients and the edge of our system where poor connectivity is most probable. To be effective, the gateway needs to be located near the backend to reduce latency as much as possible. Otherwise, we could still end up with poor performance. Next question is, how can we create a gateway service? The first option is to leverage a ready-made API gateway service. Most of the leading solutions in the market have inbuilt aggregation capabilities. They also have other interesting capabilities like security policies, message transformation, dynamic routing and many more that make them very appealing. They can also support the entire API lifecycle from design to monitoring. Before you choose a service provider or an open source project, make sure to test it out. Some providers do not offer API aggregations and moreover some are more performant than others. Another popular option is to build a gateway service that supports a query language like GraphQL. In this scenario, the client can craft a query specifying exactly what data it needs. The gateway processes the query, contacts the necessary microservices, it then combines the responses, filters out any unnecessary data and returns exactly what was requested to the client. The advantages of this approach are multiple. We are reducing the latency, but also the size of our responses. Most importantly, we're decoupling the clients from the implementation of our APIs. Modern web and mobile applications are built with frameworks that decompose the user interface into independent but reusable components. In this context, the user interface is much more flexible and can be rearranged easily to optimize the user experience. Components on a view can be removed or added, so is the data to be aggregated. In this scenario, aggregating API statically with a traditional API gateway can be counterproductive. Anytime we change the user interface, we are implicitly enforcing a change in the API aggregation layer. In the end, we will end up returning more data than needed to mitigate the continuous update on the aggregation layer, reducing the effectiveness of this approach. GraphQL, on the other hand, solves this issue since our aggregation is dynamic and query-driven. However, we pay the cost in implementation time, since we need to code ourselves a microservice capable of solving GraphQL queries. Other than leveraging an API gateway or a query language, you could develop an aggregation microservice in whatever language you like. Moreover, if you want to improve performance, you could consider the use of gRPC. However, we look at it, aggregating APIs requires development. There is no easy way out. My advice is to implement them all you need. Start without them. And if you need them, it will always be possible to add them later on.
I personally prefer an API first approach. In these methodologies, API are seen as discrete products and it's much more common to design modular, independent and interoperable APIs that combine together create an API platform. You can build as many GUIs and apps you wish on top of a well-defined platform without ever updating the backend. There is also the op that wider adoption of HTTP version 3 will remove the need of aggregation by solving those issues that make multiple requests underperform. However, it will take some time before its adoption increases, especially on the server side. That's all for this video. If you know other solutions to aggregate microservices, let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate your comments and even your critics. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to learn more and now time for another video.